Oh, sorry. I was going to watch some YouTube videos, but maybe I'll just teach a geometry lesson. And then I'm going to take that lesson and put it on YouTube so that you could watch it and I could watch it. Whoa, did I just blow your mind there? Because I just blew my own mind. And that was crazy. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. What I do know what I'm talking about, though, is that this is your first lesson in geometry, 1.1 points, lines, and shapes. And these are the basic things in geometry that you got to know about if you're going to be doing anything in this class. So, take out a pen, your lesson placket, and let's take some notes on this stuff. Okay? Let's, let's just get down to the basics. Now, if you're in a geometry class, you got to know some basic vocabulary. Like, this is like, first thing you do, this is the things we're going to be talking about a lot. Now, the first thing we're going to be talking about is points. And a point is really just a point is a specific location in space. Let's do an example of that. Like, oh, here's space. Boom! That's a point. Okay? You know what? You got to name it. So when we name it, we just put like a capital case letter next to it. Now, you might have seen points other places in life, like not just on YouTube, but like on Google Maps. Look, a point. And it gives you a specific location in space. Isn't that crazy? It's like geometry is applicable to like real life things. Whoa! My mind's blown. I hope yours is. And look, that's our school. Doesn't it look sad? But good thing we're at happy school. But that's a bad picture. What is that going on there? So how do we name a point? Well, it's just exactly what I want, just said. We use a capital letter. So we always use capital letters. Capital letters to name points. Okay? So right here, we have an example. Point, you put the letter, that's how you name it. All right. Next thing, a line. A line is a straight set of points that is one-dimensional. Now that's a fancy way of just saying, boom, that's my line, right? So in a line, remember, it's just a set of points. Just imagine there's infinite amount of points going on and on and on and on and on. Now, how do we name a line? There's a few ways. One, we could say it like this. Let's say this line has, I'm just going to name three of the points on it. Now remember, there's a ton of points, but I'm going to name one, two, three. These are my three points on the line, A, B, and C. I'm also going to put this scripted letter there because there's two ways to name this line, and I'm going to show you. Now, the first way we can name this line is by its two endpoints. We can call this A, C. Boom. That's one way to do it, just using two points. Let's put that in parentheses, two points. We could also use three points. So we could call this A, B, C. You might see it sometimes like that. And three, sometimes you can just do that little scripted letter. So just like that. So this line right here has three names, A, C, or A, B, C, or L doesn't matter which one you use, they all mean the same thing. So let's just write that there, scripted letter. Next guy, we got a point, we got a line, we'll learn about all these geometry things. Next one is an angle. Now an angle is formed by two lines meeting at a common point. Now let me show you what that means. So we got line one, so look, we got this nice line number one, and we got line number two, and they meet at this common point right here. All right? So once again, I'm going to name this. So there's a few ways to name an angle. And you know what? I'm not going to ruin the surprise because that's actually page three. So I'm just going to show you right now. There's three ways I could name this angle. You'll learn more about that. One, I could call it angle B, which is its vertex. Two, I could call it angle A, B, C. Okay, with the vertex in the middle. See how B's in the middle? Or three, I call it by the number right here. So this is angle one. Any of these are cool. Remember, there's more than one way to name something. Just kind of like how my name's Mr. Siegel, but it's actually, well, Ben. Did you know that? Teachers have first names too. They just blow your mind again. Yup, that's twice in one lesson. I'm going to calm down. And the last one, a shape. A shape is just a two-dimensional object with connected sides together. What does that mean? Well, like, look at this thing. That is a... Actually, I don't like that one. This is a shape. A, B, C, D. All right? Now, the one rule to naming a shape is that you use all the vertex angles, so A, B, C, and D. We're going to use that to name it, but they have to go in the order that they appear. So A, B, C, D, it has to go in clockwise order, in clockwise order. So, for example, 
how do you misspell order there? So in clockwise order would be A, B, C, D, or B, C, D, A. You see how I'm going in order there? All right, it's so important that you do this correctly. So you have to go in order. So like A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. You cannot go out of order. So a wrong way, so this is, I'm gonna show you this, bad, would be to do it like this. Let's call it C, D, and I'm gonna jump out of order. B, A. Can't do that because it's out of order. And a little thing we like to add on the side, depending on what the shape looks like, we like to put a little version of that shape there. So this would be rectangle, A, B, C, D. So you have a little shape and then A, B, C, D. All right, so now that we know about points, lines, shapes, and angles, which are like the building box of geometry, we're going to move on to symbols. And these are the three symbols that you see here. One, two, three, bing, bang, boom. These are the three most important symbols that you're going to be seeing in geometry this year. And you got to know what they mean and how to use them, okay? Super important. I'm going to be saying them all the time. So, uh, yeah, you gotta, you got to learn this. So, number one, the first one. What does these little symbol mean, these two little lines? All right? This symbol right here means parallel. And parallel means two lines that never touch. I have a feeling you've heard that before if you've been in school. So parallel is two lines that never touch. Now, I want to show you how we would use that and mark it. This is the important thing. So let's say I have two lines right here, okay? A, B, and C, D, okay? Now, how can I show, just using some sort of notation or marking, that these are parallel? And I'll show you put a little arrow in the middle of those lines and that means they're parallel so you see this little notation that tells me that they're parallel so because they have these little markings or you put these marking here i could say that a b is parallel to c d and i just want to say whenever you're talking about lines you got to put that little line symbol on top it's really important it's what a good geometry see i didn't just write a b that tells me line a b is parallel to line CD. Beautiful. Next one, perpendicular. Now what perpendicular means is that's two lines, all right, that form a 90 degree angle. Not 89 degrees, not 52 degrees, 90 degrees. All right, and if we look here, this looks like a 90 degree angle right here. So that's why it's the perfect symbol. Okay, now how do we mark this? Now let's use this example one more time. All right, so let's draw another two lines. Okay, watch what I'm doing here. And if you're thinking it doesn't look exactly 90, well, no one's perfect, so deal with it. I'm doing my best, and that's all you can do. All right, so how do I show that these two are perpendicular and not some other angle? Now, just like here we had a marking, the mark we use is this, this little box. And that little box means 90 degrees. So if I saw that there, I would know that AB, right there, is perpendicular to CD. Okay? It's 90 degrees. Alright? And that's just one way. There's many ways to draw it. You could draw it like this if you wanted to. You could say, um, see? And that's 90 degree angle. So I could say AB is perpendicular to CD. Now I know what you're thinking again. You've got to put those lines there. Just want to see if you're paying attention. You've got to put those lines. Line AB is perpendicular to line CD. And now the last one is congruent. And you're going to hear me say this so much throughout the year. All right? So let's get what congruent means. And that's an equal sign with that little swiggle. And that means exactly the same size and shape. Okay? That's what congruent means. Congruent is the same size and shape. So let's do our final example. Let's say I got my line right here. We got AB. We got CD again. Now these look about the same size, right? But I don't know for sure. Well, what we're going to use is this, this little, we call these hash marks. And these hash marks tell me that they're congruent. So now I could say that AB is congruent to CD. And what I forget to put, let's write those little lines. So now it says line AB is congruent to line CD. All right, so these three symbols, super important. Let's do a little example with these, all right, because you're going to do a lot of marking. So whenever you're given information, like you see here, you're going to want to mark the shapes. Well, let's let's take a closer look. Mark the triangles below with the following information. 
All right, so we're going to be given some information. We want to mark these two triangles with it. In triangle ABC, notice how I'm using the shape here to call it a triangle. In triangle ABC and triangle EFG, we know that line AB is congruent to line EF. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to mark it AB and EF. So that tells me that AB, this line right here, is congruent to line EF. I also know that line BC is congruent to line FG. All right, look how much information I'm getting from all these weird symbols. And notice how now I use two, right? Because I got to show that BC and FG are congruent, so I got to use a different amount of hash marks. And then finally, AC is congruent to EG. All right, so one, two, three, one, two, three. And that shows me that AC and EG are congruent, all right? And I've marked the given information on my shapes. Now my next example, MN intersects with OP at point E, and line MN is perpendicular to line OP, right? So we know that means perpendicular. So how are we going to draw that? Well, let's look. So first we got line MN, all right? And we got line OP. Okay, so we drew our two lines, and they intersect. Let's read this. MN intersects OP at point E. So you got to read carefully. It's important. Now, what's the last thing I have to put here so I can show that they're perpendicular? There's a marking I have to put. Well, that's right. I got to put that little right there, that box, because that tells me that it's 90 degrees right there. And that's how you mark things. Pretty straightforward. You're going to be doing a lot of that. Now, finally, we're going to be talking about angles and naming angles. I know you're thinking, like, why are we talking about naming stuff? Trust me, it's like teaching to read. We need to learn how to read things, okay? So, let's do this. So, how do you name an angle? Like, as I told you before, there's three ways to name it, okay? The first one is by its vertex. And the vertex is where the two lines meet. So, remember, all angles made by two lines. So, these two lines meet at point B. So one way to name this would be line A, line B, right? Because B is in the middle, that's my vertex, that's one way to name it. Number two is by the number that you see right here. So one, another way to say this is angle one. And then finally, the third way is to use all the, the letters you see here. So you go around, okay, the sides and the letters. Now here's the big thing. When you name an angle using three letters, the vertex must always be in the middle. I can't emphasize that enough. It's going to mess you up this year. I've seen it too many times as a geometry teacher. It'll always be in the middle. So let's do that. So angle, what will we name this? Well, let's start from the top. We go A, B, C. All right. And look how B is in the middle. All right. B is in the middle. B is my vertex. I did it correctly. Let's... uh. Let's do a little example here. So we're going to name the marked angle in three ways. Well, the marked angle is right here. So first one we're going to do, we're going to use the vertex of that angle. So that's angle F, right? The other way we could do it is use the number. Angle, well, that's two. And now let's use three letters, okay? Angle F, G, E. All right, did that perfectly. Right? No, I didn't do that perfectly. What's wrong with you? Are you paying attention? Jeez. See, it's like I'm a real teacher, but on a video. The what I did there is you can't call it that because the vertex always has to be in the middle. So if I put F G E here, is the vertex in the middle? No, I messed that up. So let's put it in the middle. So let's do this properly. All right. So we start from the other side. So we'll go E F G. The vertex is in the middle, so this is angle E, F, G. All right. So let's do our final example before I send you off. Name the marked angle, and why should we not just use the vertex to name it? Well, the marked angle is right here, and that's angle E. And we'll E, H, G. And you see how I traced it and I made sure that the vertex, which is right here in the middle, is also in the middle here. That's so important. 
Now, why can't we just use one point to name it? Why can't I just say angle H? What's wrong with that, right? What's wrong, why can't I do it? Well, if you look here, angle H could be four different angles. It could be this angle, but why couldn't angle H, which is the vertex, also be this angle? Or maybe it's this angle. Or maybe it's this angle. So when an angle, when a vertex has many different angles, Okay, you just have to use three letters. And in fact, it's best to use three letters because it gets confusing because angle H could also be right here. So if it ever shares a side, got to use more than one. Now, the last thing I'd like to show you is how to figure out how many degrees. So how many degrees are in DHE? So let's just highlight that. I'm going to take out my highlighter and let's see where angle DHE is. So D, the vertex H is in the middle, E. So it's this angle right here. That angle is over here. So there's 120 degrees in that angle. And it'll really help you if you start highlighting it so you can see where those angles are. All right, that's it for this lesson. Peace out, guys. Oh, and one piece of advice, don't kick cats. They're beautiful creatures.